Hello, and thank you all for taking the time to support myself and the other scholars in the presentation of our research. My name is Ashley Bland, and today I'll be presenting about developing a more efficient transition metal supercapacitor, uh, specifically exploring materials and shapes within transition metals. This research has been conducted under, under the guidance of Dr. Wei Wei within the Mechanical Engineering Department and will be used as a basis for my laboratory research experiment during the fall 2021 semester. Supercapacitors were first invented and patented in 1957 by a researcher by the name of H.I. Becker. He created a much simpler supercapacitor design than the one we see today and named them electrochemical devices. Then, in 1975, a Stanford researcher named Robert Reitmeyer improved the design to create the general structure we see today. They're one of the newest up-and-coming energy storage technologies in existence. They're environmentally friendly, they have fast charge and discharge rates, and they're clean and renewable. However, a number of struggles have faced them in the past, such as small accessible surface areas, low energy densities, and on top of this, energy density is difficult to increase without sacrificing power density and cycle life. They have a large number of applications, such as hybrid cars and trucks, wearable technology, emergency aircraft exits, and even the newer hybrid supercapacitor Lamborghinis, which were released in 2019 and use supercapacitors in place of lithium ion batteries and there are even more applications yet to be discovered. There are several different types of supercapacitor, with the main two being pseudocapacitors and electrical double layer capacitance supercapacitors. The way that pseudocapacitors work is they store their energy through fast and reversible Faradayic redox reactions, which generally means that the current is generated by the reduction or oxidation of a chemical substance at an electrode. Electrical double layer supercapacitors function through storing energy with the charge accumulating on the interface between the electrode and electrolyte. However, both types of devices are plagued by their low energy densities. Recently, electrical double layer capacitance supercapacitors have been more favored in research due to their higher energy densities and higher specific capacitances. However, when using transition metals, they can sometimes have lower conductivity but some hybrid materials do help to combat this. There are two main categories for the shapes in which supercapacitors are found as well, and two-dimensional and three-dimensional supercapacitors. Most two-dimensional supercapacitors found today are in the form of ultra-thin sheets, as you see in the photos. These 2D sheets provide improved energy densities, improved utilization of surface area, superior electrochemical performance, and superior charge storage capability. And they're especially popular for use in the wearable technology industries. Three-dimensional shapes, like you see here, are more similar to and shaped to a typical lithium battery, um, but these supercapacitors have much more efficient and rapid ion transportation than the 2D supercapacitors do. They also exhibit improved energy densities and improved electrical conductivity. So here's an example of the inner structure of both two-dimensional and three-dimensional supercapacitors. In general, there is a cathode, which you see on the right side in the right photo. Um, it's a positive side, and then there's an anode, or a negative side, separated by electrolytes and a membrane-like separator in the middle. Another way that supercapacitors can vary is in the materials they're composed of. The most common com compositions include transition metal oxides, carbon-based materials, and transition metal hybrids. Carbon-based materials composed many of the earliest supercapacitors and were efficient for their purposes due to their high power densities, long cycle lives, but they have low specific capacitances and they're much lighter weight, which leads to lower energy densities. For this reason, carbon has limited practical applications. In comparison, transition metal oxides are much heavier, which provides higher energy densities, and they also have better cycling stability and are much more affordable. However, most transition metal oxide supercapacitors have poor conductivity. Historically, researchers have focused a lot of energy on ruthenium oxide, which performed well under standards of specific capacitance and energy density, but it's slightly toxic, creating pollution in the environment, which is something researchers are trying to eliminate. On top of this, ruthenium oxide is very expensive to purchase and very rare to find in the environment. In comparison, manganese oxide is much more cost effective and environmentally compatible as well. It's also naturally abundant and doesn't create the pollution that ruthenium oxide does. 
On top of all of this, it still provides a high theoretical capacitance. Other metals and hybrids include iron oxide, which has a high specific capacitance and abundant resources, and it's also affordable. Similar to manganese oxide, it creates less pollution than the ruthenium products do. Another viable option is manganese nickel or manganese cobalt hybrids, which create high redox activities, variable valence states, and higher electrical conductivities. The information found during this literature review will be used as a basis of knowledge in order to structure my fall 2021 laboratory research study under the supervision of Dr. Wei in the mechanical engineering department. Further studies will investigate manganese oxide as a supercapacitor electrode material and will test energy density, specific capacitance, and specific energy. In conclusion, supercapacitors are a viable option for a new and renewable energy source with their environmental capability helping combat climate change and global pollution while still being cost effective and efficient. These are my references. And at this time, I am now open for questions. Yeah, so that's a really great question. Um, on a more basic level and more general level, um, they store energy better than lithium ion batteries would um, due to the chemical reactions that are taking place within these capacitors. So earlier, I mentioned the basic structure of supercapacitors. So there's the cathode and uh, anode with the separator in the middle and electrolytes as well. So the cathode and anode, their contrast um, and charges are what creates that energy charge. Um, and then the separator and electrolytes help to capture that a little bit. So that's a basic answer. Yeah, so manganese um, definitely was at the top of the list just because of cost and abundance. Um, but personally, I have special interest in iron oxide just because it has some of the similar traits um, as manganese does, and it's also affordable and abundant. Um, it's really easy to get iron, so I would say that that's second in line. <laughs>